Shalom. Shalom and welcome. Welcome to the White Rose Family Channel. If you're tuning in for the first time, my name is Simonai, and these are the words I'm compelled to present before an awakening set apart nation. To those who are drawn by the Almighty Father Yahuwah, to his word, Yahushua, as it is written in John 6, 44. To those who will discover that the Almighty Father sent his spirit also in Yahushua's name, as, is, as it is written in John 14, 26. There is no trinity, my brothers and sisters. The name Yahushua represents the word of Yahuwah, how he chose to communicate with us and work with us. And he set his part, set his set apart spirit in Yahushua's name to keep it consistent with no man can come to him except by recognizing how he communicates to us. And that's through his word, Yahushua. In his word, after the resurrection, he shared his word, his spirit among us and in us. And we will grow to understand what that means in the days, of he uh, days ahead. But before I get into this segment, I want to say this to you who I consider my brothers and sisters. The words and messages that I present are to you. They do not necessarily reflect the views of the owners, managers, shareholders, and or sponsors of this media platform. With that said, let's get started. In this segment, I want to bring your attention to the words promoting versus ministering. Promoting versus ministering. And you might say, well, what am I talking about? And I'm going to present the case where as end times are here, it would be wise for us to look at how we spend in our time and who or what we are giving attention to. And there's a difference between just plain old promoting something versus ministering. I present to you the definition, a definition of a promoting, or should I say a promoting? Let me fix that real quick. Yasharal, my brothers and sisters, what are we spending our energy on? Have you given thought to how to manage your time? Have you given thought to the best use of time. Promoting, further the progress of something, especially a cause, venture, or aim, support or actively encourage. Another meaning is, another meaning is advance or raise someone to a higher position or rank. Now let me present definitions of ministering. Let me direct your attention to the definition of ministry, my brothers and sisters. It says, attend to the needs of someone. It means to be a servant. I submit to you, Yashara, do we see our leaders serving? Are they ministering? Our brothers and sisters, are we ministering to one another? Do we truly know what our leaders believe? Have we vetted, examined our leaders thoroughly before pushing our position with specific communities, camps, groups, etc.? In other words, some people for all the wrong reasons have jumped into communities, camps, groups, and some have not only jumped into these groups, but they promote them, they push them, not fully knowing what the leader believe, not fully knowing what their position is as it relates to these end times, as it relates to them. They just want to be a part of, and this is dangerous, my brothers and sisters. And I say to you, Are you one who's been a victim of someone promoting 
quote unquote, a good cause. The victim of someone promoting their agenda or the agenda of their pastor, Moray, Bishop, Deacon, for all the wrong reasons. It's time to get to know who we have aligned ourselves with. For beware, there are many promoting their communities, camps, groups, etc., overspreading set apart teachings. Next time you are involved in a fellowship, my brothers and sisters, I encourage you, look at your watch or clock or timepiece on your phone. Look at the time and see how much time is spent on that leader, pushing that leader, that community, that camp or group. See how much time is spent on that versus satisfying the hunger, the needs that exist for the children of Yasharal, for those that are in attendance to such gatherings. Beware, Yasharal. Leaders can and will, in some cases, cause the demise of others. Let me give you an example. Yasharal, as we enter into our last days, Consider number 16, 28 through 33. I've shared it before. And oh, how we are in the end times. Such tragedies could happen again. Remember, the Almighty Father does not change. My brothers and sisters. Hear me out as I read number 16, 28 through 33. And Moshe said, by this you know that Yahuwah has sent me to do all these works, that they are not from my own heart. If these die as all men do, and if they are visited as all men are visited, then Yahuwah has not sent me. But if Yahuwah creates what is unheard of, and the earth opens its mouth and swallows them up with all that belongs, that belongs to them, and they go down alive into the grave, or Sheol, then you shall know that these men have scorned Yahuwah. And it came to be as he ended speaking all these words that the ground under them split apart and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up with their households and all the men with Korah with all their goods. So they and all those with them went down alive into the grave into Sheol, and the earth closed over them and they perished from the midst of the assembly. This was Dathan, Korah and Abiram and those who followed them. You might say that I'm presenting fear among you. I say to you, O Yasharal, do we believe what we read? Do we believe what exists? Do we believe it can happen again for such a time as this? You see, there are those who promote their community, their camp, their group, the fellowship, more so than promoting the set-apart nation of Yasharal, more so than lifting up Yahushua Mashiach, that he will draw all men unto himself, him being the word of Yahuwah. If you are in a community, a camp, a group, a fellowship, etc., ask questions, my brothers and sisters, of each leader separately regarding the position of belief. In other words, if there are uh, more than one leader, multiple leaders or the leadership, get them alone one-on-one -on -one, and ask them their position of belief. What do they believe? Ask them enough questions to you are satisfied and at peace that you're with the right group. If not, my brothers and sisters, you may want to pray and think twice whether you want to be a part of that assembly, that group, for the wrong reasons. And do not fall victim of those who say you're not going to find a perfect fellowship. I'm not encouraging you to seek that perfect fellowship. I am encouraging you to seek that fellowship that pursues perfection by obeying the living voice of the Spirit of Yahuwah, whose word come, whose spirit come, in Yahushua's name. That I am strongly encouraging. Yashra, Yashra, it is highly possible 
to discern and know about each group, each camp, each community that you come in contact with. Remember, my brothers and sisters, remember these words and take them to heart regarding division. For I believe in communities, camps, groups, and fellowships. For a leader to not pursue the perfection and set of partners who will tolerate compromises, who will allow different cliques within their camp, fellowship, or group just to enlarge their numbers, you might want to think twice. For any such camp, group, community, that's divided against itself with cliques in it that disagree with the leadership will not stand. Hear these words as I read Matthew 12, 25. Matthew 12, 25 says this, And Yahushua knew their thoughts and said to them, Every rain divided against itself is laid waste. Every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. It also speaks of these words in Mark 3, 24 and 25. If a rain is divided against itself, that rain is unable to stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house is unable to stand. My brothers and sisters, believe it or not, as end times ramp up, there will be a lot of communities, camps, fellowships that will fall to the wayside due to the division, the things that are hidden, the different cliques within them. Prepare to watch a restructuring, a repositioning, a gathering of those who will obey the Almighty Father to fulfill this final exodus and so much more. Let us also be mindful that judgment begins at the house of Yahuwah first. And we are that house of Yasharal. And that judgment comes as the Spirit works in us through us. Consider these words in 1 Peter 4, 17 and 19 through 19. It said, because it is time for judgment to begin with the house of the Almighty One. And if firstly from us, what is the end of those who do not obey the good news of the Almighty One? And if the righteous one scarcely is scarcely saved, where shall the wicked and the sinner appear? So then those who suffer according to the desire of the Almighty One should commit their lives to a trustworthy creator in doing good. Yashara O oh Yashara, is it good to promote camps, fellowships, and groups that we see division, that we see cliques, that we see have a destiny for failure? We will grow to realize that each of us will be held accountable for our actions as we work out this salvation individually, and collectively, Yashara or oh Yashara, do we have needs? Yes, we do. The scripture warns us as we seek to discern and recognize our needs or recognize the shepherds among us. Shepherds have their warnings. Consider these words strongly as we are walking in these end times, my brothers and sisters. In the 23rd chapter of Matthew, it is written, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are filled with plunder and unrighteousness. Blind Pharisee first clean the inside of the cup and dish, so that the outside of them become clean too. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you are like whitewashed tombs, which outwardly indeed look well, but inside are filled with dead man bones and all uncleanliness. So you too outwardly indeed appear righteous to men, but inside you are filled with hypocrisy and lawlessness. You see, my brothers and sisters, there are warnings to the shepherds, to the assemblies as well. So don't put all of it on the shepherd themselves. There's a warning that goes out to the assemblies. And I submit to you an excerpt of an example of what I'm talking about. It's a portion of what is directed at two, two of the assemblies in Revelation chapter 2 and 3.
my brothers and sisters, what say you? Hear these words as I read them. Revelation 2, 5, so remember from where you have fallen and repent and do the first works or else I shall come to you speedily and remove your lance from its place unless you repent. Revelation 3, 2 and 3 says, wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your works complete before the Almighty One. Remember then how you have received and heard and watch and repent. If then you do not wake up, I shall come upon you as a thief and you shall not know at all what hour I come upon you. This is an excerpt, my brothers and sisters, letting us know that even in warnings of assemblies, assemblies stumble. This chapter two and three in Revelation talks about seven assemblies. And many people think it was just during certain time periods. I submit to you, my brothers and sisters, the characteristics of the behaviors of these assemblies exist today. Collectively, we see these characters. Let no one think that one community is better than the other or this camp is better than the other. If they are pushing and promoting their logo, their name, and not pushing and promoting the Almighty Father, Yahuwah, in Yahushua's name, not lifting him up. Nowhere in scripture do we see people saying, my ministry, this is my ministry. And walking around with the different names of the ministries, the way we see it today. And people promote these ministries and stand by them and speak highly of their leadership. The time is now to identify those who are contributing to building unity among the set apart nation versus those pushing something or someone else's agenda. Yasharal, my brothers and sisters, what say you in such times as this? What is your position? Let me begin by identifying the needs of one another and ask ourselves, who's truly ministering to the body of set apart Yasharal? Are we receiving more about the bread of life, Yahushua? Are we growing strong with the endless water that Yahushua spoke of, his word being made alive in us? Do we have conversations and fellowship with one another that makes us stronger and closer together, strengthening us? Or are we busy pushing, promoting the agenda of another? Yashara or Yashara, let me also direct your attention to the Exodus. Here we see in the 20th chapter of Exodus, you will find the Ten Commandments. And I just want to read some of it. The third verse in the 20th chapter of Exodus says, You have no other mighty ones against my face. Are we putting our leaders, our pastors, our bishops ahead of Yahuwah? Ahead of his word, we speak more about the camp leader and what the pastor is doing or what the bishop is doing than what the spirit of Yahushua is doing within us. The spirit of the Almighty Father that comes to us in Yahushua's name. Many of us do this unaware. But if you look at how much time is spent magnifying anyone other than Yahuwah whose word come to us in Yahushua's name, something is wrong. The fourth verse through the sixth says, you do not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of that which is in the heavens above or which is in the earth beneath or which is in the waters under the earth. You do not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, Yahuwah, your almighty one, am a jealous all, visiting the crookedness of the fathers of the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing loving commitment to thousands of those who love me and guard my commands. Now, many of us don't realize this, but when we walk up to the pulpit or to the front of an assembly, 
And we bow down before these leaders, these pastors, these deacons, for them to pray for us or anoint us or prophesy over us. When we lift them up more than seeking the face of the Almighty Father, we are violating the commandments, unaware that the very commandments we talk strongly and speak highly of, we violate them. When we see those who walk up to the person that's dressed in so-called Hebrew garb with Yahuwah's name on it, or a menorah, or Yahushua's name on it, or jewelry, or tattoos with Yahuwah's name or Yahushua's name, and we leaning into their ser and servitude to them, something is wrong, my brothers and sisters. Soon and very soon, a great correction will clean up the appearance of Yasharal. And we will realize the difference in promoting imagery versus seeking to serve and worship the Almighty Father. The same matter with lions. I see people putting a lion's head on their profile and a lion on jewelry and, and a lion on their garments and tattoos with a lion. We are not lions, my brothers and sisters, nor are we to be promoting the image of a lion. When it talks about Yahushua being a lion of the tribe of Judah, it's speaking of strength and courage, the attributes of a lion that was given to that lion by the Almighty Father. Nowhere are we ordered to be promoting the lion or the head of a lion. It is vanity. It is a violation of the commandment, my brothers and sisters. The menorah or placing Yahuwah's name or the name of his word, Yahushua, on garments, jewelry, or any other material is an abomination. And soon and very soon, we will witness, as a result of the discipline from the Almighty Father, us focusing on demonstrating love and set apartness to one another and growing stronger in righteousness as we lean into the corrections, get under the blood of the Lamb, repent, and be renewed by His Spirit. Yashara, O oh Yashara. It's time to be mindful of the various methods. The Almighty Yahuwah will demonstrate set apart ministering to His children. And part of meeting that need is bringing correction, discipline, judgment, strengthening and magnifying and confirming when we are indeed walking in obedience. Yashara, oh Yashara, we have a responsibility to one another. Consider these words. My brother, my sister, my family, consider these words in Hebrews 3rd chapter, verses 12 through 15. It reads, look out. Brothers, lest there be any of you a wicked heart of unbelief and falling away from the living Almighty One. But encourage one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened by the deceivableness of sin. For we have become partakers of Messiah if we hold fast the beginning of our trust firm to the end. While it is said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. Let us encourage one another, my brothers and sisters, to pursue correction, to pursue refinement, to yield to the discipline of the Almighty Father. Let's take a look at these words in Galatians chapter 6, verse, verses 1 through 7 my brothers and sisters. Galatians chapter six, verse one through seven says, brother, if a man is overtaken in some trespass, you, the spiritual ones, set such a one straight in the spirit of meekness, looking at yourself, lest you be tried too. Bear one another's burdens and so complete the Torah of Messiah. For if anyone thinks of himself to be somebody when he is not, he deceives himself. 
Remember, my brothers and sisters, we are all members of one body under one spirit, we who are the set-apart children of Yahuwah. And if one hurts, it hurts the body we hurt. We have an obligation and a responsibility to restore such a one. There are many ways that the Almighty Father exact discipline and bring about correction. Search out the scriptures and you will see, my brothers and sisters. They say, but let each one examine his own work. And then he shall have boasting in himself alone and not in another. For each one should bear his own burden. For let him who is instructed in the word share in all that is good with him who is instructing. Do not be led astray. The Almighty one is not mocked. For whatever man sows, he shall also reap. There's a way in which we are to govern ourselves, manage our burdens, assist by ministering to the needs of others as we are directed. Never forget these words, my brothers and sisters, because it requires examination. It requires vetting. And I mention this often because so many of us want to go through our day without thinking we need to vet every encounter we come to. Consider the words in Philippians 1, 9 through 11. For it reads, and this I pray, that your love might extend more and more in knowledge and all discernment for you to examine the matters that differ in order to be sincere and not stumbling into the day of Messiah, being filled with the fruit of righteousness through Yahushua Messiah, to the esteem and praise of the Almighty One. Yashra, O oh Yashra, we are instructed to examine matters. I strongly encourage each of us to know how to examine all things correctly. At least we find ourselves echoing the agenda of one who is plain wrong and misguided. Yashra, O oh Yashra, ask questions. Ask questions. If you don't know what questions to ask, seek sound counsel on what questions to ask. And that counsel should reflect, point you to the scriptures and point you to pray to discern the life in the scriptures. People will go around and just say, that's what the book says, that was the book says, and throw a scripture at you, especially at the unlearned. Fail to realize, my brothers and sisters, without understanding the life in the scriptures, you may find yourselves misinterpreting what it's saying or when it's applicable, when it applies to the event or the situation. It's time to believe there will be a final exodus which requires gathering, my brothers and sisters. I want to share a couple of passages as it relates to the final exodus, for I believe it is indeed important to revisit these words again, especially for those who are tuning in for the first time. Isaiah eleven twelve saying, He shall raise a banner of the nations and gather the outcasts of Yasharal and the symbol of, of the dispersed of Yehuda from the four corners of the earth. All set apart ones who will be in the final exodus will ultimately fall under the banner of Yashara. Now the seventh chapter of Revelation mentions 144,000 and 12 tribes. It eliminates Dan and Dan is replaced with Manasseh as the 12th tribe. And so the 12 tribes will fulfill what has been prophesied, but ultimately even them will all collectively be under one set apart nation and that banner will be Yashara. In Isaiah 43, 5 through 7, it says, Do not fear, for I am with you. I shall bring your seed from the east and gather you from the west. I shall say to the north, give them up. To the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. All those who are called by my name, and see, people miss this part, whom I have created, formed, even made for my esteem. There are those who have created and formed to fulfill the final exodus. And people will think that that's saying everybody's going to be gathered from the four corners of the earth before the physical return of Yahushua. That's not so. We will see those that will die as martyrs for Yahushua's name. We will see some that will fall to the wayside, busy still trying to promote the community, the camp, the fellowship, fall to the wayside because they're still on milk and may be experiencing unbelief. 
but the discipline of the Almighty Father will bring them into correctness. And keep in mind, when they say no one will be left behind, it is my position of belief that those who are our brothers and sisters will either die as martyrs or out of their own unbelief. But if they are indeed our brothers and sisters, they will rest until judgment day. So their spirit goes to the bosom of Abraham. It's not left behind. The time is now to begin asking ourselves, how will we be gathered together? The time is now to prepare to move. I believe it will be intermittent. If ever there was a time to start getting closer to one another, that time is now. If ever there was a time to discern which direction to start moving, that time is now. And I believe those in the Western Hemisphere will collectively come to the Commonwealth, the state of Virginia, before crossing the Atlantic Ocean. And I believe those that are in other parts of the world will face the border, will move towards the border that, that is closely, closely pointing to the promised land, which I believe is in Northeast Africa. And I believe that focal point will be where Jabal Allah's is in the northwest quadrant of what have now known as Saudi Arabia. And Jabal Allah, I believe, is the true Mount Sinai. Have you ever asked why all these pictures of Africa have the Middle East chopped off? If you do your research, you'll find out that all that is part of Africa. The Middle East have not always existed. And they have seduced people into believing that Africa is that big continent without that boot portion that looks like the Middle East or Saudi Arabia. That's Northeast Africa, my brothers and sisters. And that's part of the promised land between the Euphrates and the Nile. And people don't realize that when Yahuwah is scattered, he's scattered. When he made desolate, he made desolate. Some will have you think the promised land is somewhere else. Watch. Watch and discover those who are true leaders, guides, for this final exodus and see what direction we head. Those who will participate. I could be wrong, but I believe I will be a contributing factor to the gathering of Yasharal on the Western Hemisphere. It will be wise to discover the life in these words as they relate to being gathered together. Yasharal, my brothers and sisters, Come with me to John chapter 12, 32 to 36. John 12, 32 to 36 reads, And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, shall draw all men to myself. This he says, signifying by which death he was about to die. The literal is discussing how Yahushua was sacrificed. But he did not want them to stop with the narrative there. For in his death, we read and we discover there was the resurrection and that Yahuwah sent his set apart spirit in Yahushua's name. They say the crowd answered him saying, we have heard out of the Torah that the Messiah remains forever. See, that lets you know he didn't just want you to focus on how he would die. They say, and whom do you say the son of Adam has to be lifted up? Who is the son of Adam's? Yahushua answered, Adam rather. Yahushua therefore said to them, Yet a little while the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. And he who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you become sons of the light, sons of light. These words Yahushua spoke and went off and was hidden from them. Yahushua was that light. Yahushua is that light. When I say was in terms of him walking physically with them. He was the light of the world. He is the light of the world. He is the word of Yahuwah that is presented before us. Allow me to share these words as well as I continue, O Yasharal. Do these words minister and contribute to your needs? Am I promoting a camp, a community? I don't throw out these community names frequently. 
But I tell you, a great correction is coming, my brothers and sisters. For soon and very soon, all that matters, and we will know it sooner than later, is the set-apart nation of Yasharal and those who will be of the 144,000 and part of that set-apart nation, 12,000 of each of the 12 tribes of Yasharal. Consider Revelation 7, 4 said, And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 sealed out of all the tribes of the children of Yasharal. Drop down to the ninth verse saying, This I looked and saw a great crowd, which no one was able to count, out of all the nations and tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, dressed in white robes and palm branches in their hands, crying out with a loud voice saying, Deliverance belongs to our Almighty One who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. I submit to you, my brothers and sisters, it'll be a remnant, but it will be a great multitude which no man will be able to count. And how do you get both when you compare the number of a great multitude to the world population? That's your remnant, less than 1%, less than one whole. You see, so it will be a remnant but it would be a great multitude. And how many of us are seeking to discern how the Almighty Father will structure us, work through us? Do we have time to be promoting camps, communities, fellowships, or should we be lifting up Yahushua and witnessing his spirit guide us into the structuring of a set apart nation as we find ourselves beginning to come closer to one another? Revelation 7, 13 and 14, I want to read this because it is important as well. And one of the elders responded, saying to me, Who are these dressed in white robes? Where did they come from? And I said to him, Master, you know. He said to me, These are those coming out of the great distress, having washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. We don't see camp names. We don't see community names. We don't see individual group names. We see the set apart children of Yasharal under the banner of Yasharal. We see the 12 tribes of Yasharal as mentioned in the seventh chapter, alone with them being from Yaakov, representing Yaakov, whose name was changed to Yasharal. So it's time to come away from these names, my brothers and sisters. It's time to say, I am a part of the set-apart nation of Yasharal. Believe it or not, my brothers and sisters, the need for ministering one to another is greater than unfruitful behaviors that demonstrate promoting things outside of set-apartness. Watch what you're promoting. Consider ministering over promoting one's personal agenda or even a group agenda. Pursue the agenda of the Almighty Father. Rise up, O Yasharal. My brothers and sisters, begin discussions regarding coming together. Ask the question, are we promoting someone else's hidden agenda or are we ministering to the needs of one another? That time is now. Have those discussions. Make those decisions. Choose wisely what you're going to do. Watch, O Yasharal, for I believe in the cleansing of a set-apart nation and the refining of a set apart nation. As we receive discipline from the Almighty Father, we will grow to lift up Yahushua and we will grow to see that it is He that we will push, promote, and minister as He guide us and as He direct us. Promoting versus ministering. I strongly encourage you to know the difference. Know which takes priority over the other. On that note, O Yasharal, watch and pray as we navigate through the changes that we will face as discipline, refine us and equip us with all that is necessary to prove to the world that we are indeed the children of the Almighty Father and that he is indeed gathering and will gather his flock and he will return. Yasharal, be encouraged. I strongly encourage you to realize there is so much work to be done. Stay tuned, my brothers and sisters. There will be details and processes that will become clear 
as those used by the Almighty Father speak out. Speak with the confidence, the power, and the confirmation and reaffirmation to what must be done. Discover ways to get connected and involved with those being used by the Almighty Father. I invite you to subscribe, share, like, if you believe any of these words have any impact on lifting up Yahushua, drawing you closer to the Almighty Father. What say you, my brothers and sisters? Choose wisely. On that note, I say to you, my brother, my sister, my family, be encouraged. Our redemption draws near sooner than we realize. Shalom. Shalom to you. O set apart nation, Yasharal.